In this video, we're going to create an interactive PDF in Adobe InDesign CS6 that functions like you see before you. So this PDF um, has buttons at the top that jump between pages as well as the forward and back buttons that work. And this method I'm going to show you will also work in creating a Swift file, which can be open on a web browser. Um, same functionality, it's also got a page turn with no scripting involved. So all of this is built in. Um, no scripting involved in the method I'm about to show you. So we're going to open up Adobe InDesign CS6 and choose File New Document. Now in my New Document dialog box, likely you want this to be interactive only. So you can choose Web or Digital Publishing and choose your page size here. I'm going to make this a print PDF with interactive elements in it. So I can use this to print it out to make a print PDF as well as an interactive PDF if I wish to do that so later on. I'm going to uncheck facing pages for this demonstration. I'm going to use four pages. Um, you can have as many as you wish. I'm going to choose page size letter and change my orientation right here to landscape. All the rest of this, all the rest of these settings are guides and I'm not going to set any of those up. I'm not worried about that for this document. Hit OK. Takes you to your document. Um, you can also go back to that by choosing File, Document Setup, and change facing pages here if that you accidentally left that checked. Um, done that a few times. If we want to set up our workspace to be set for interactive for PDF, we can have a workspace for that. Um, go to Window Workspace, Interactive for PDF, right there. And that's my workspace as you see before you. Now I should have four pages. If I zoom out, I do. And so I should be set, ready to go. I'm going to do all of my graphics. Actually, you can do all of your graphics in InDesign. You can go to the rectangle tool, create rectangles, text boxes, text, everything you can do right here in InDesign. I've actually already created my graphics in Adobe Illustrator. I just switched to Adobe Illustrator, as you see in the top left corner. Um, if you use Photoshop or Illustrator or another graphics program, you can select, especially Adobe, graphics programs. You can select the um, graphics you want, choose edit copy, and then go back to InDesign and choose edit paste to place your imagery into the document. Um, so you don't have to create all of your graphics in InDesign. I, th it, I think it is better. It's going to give you more user usability, more more functionality, um, but you don't have to. I'm going to jump to the pages icon or Actually, I'll go to the bottom left corner and choose A Master. So if you click on A Master right down here in the bottom left corner, or if you double click right here, I'm going to jump to A Master because I want these buttons to be on every page. So A Master will do that for me. So double click A Master. Um, I'm actually, instead of pasting it this time, I'm going to go File Place. Let's say you have a Photoshop file with all your buttons already created on it. Um, you can choose that Photoshop file or that Illustrator file and hit open and then click on the upper left corner and it will place that file for you. So I've got my buttons created and numbered and everything right here. As you see here, it placed these graphics on every page. So that my, my background graphic placed on every page. This graphic I don't need anymore, so I'm gonna click on it and hit delete with the selection tool and go back to A Master. So now I'm ready to go. I'm ready to set my buttons. My buttons are, graphics are already there. They're just not functional. Maker. I'm going to go down to now to um, the next panel I'm going to use is a panel that already has buttons set up for you. So if you don't want to create your graphics, you can go this method. Um, lots of options to this. Go Window Interactive Buttons and Forms. They already have buttons set up for you. You have to click on this little flyout menu icon right here in the top right of this menu and choose sample buttons and forms and they have radio buttons, they have forward and back buttons, they have check boxes, all sorts of things. I'm going to choose the forward and back buttons um, by clicking these little arrows and dragging them out. Just click and drag a button you like and drag it out and those buttons are already set up. They're, some of them are already working. Um, this one's set up to go to a URL so you can type out google.com or how about YouTube? YouTube.com Design. So we'll see what that does. I should have done that as my button right there. I'll just put it right there. 
little button. Okay, so now I'm going to move these buttons over. I'm still on the selection tool, the black arrow, so I can click on these buttons um, and move them wherever I want, and I can scale them as well by clicking a corner, holding shift down so I don't skew them, and drag. So click and drag to, to grab them, make them bigger, smaller. Um, be sure to hold down shift so you don't get make them skewed too much. And now I'm going to duplicate these items. So as you see here, these are, are already set up to go to next page. I'm going to have to change that, but I'm going to go ahead and click on one of them and drag. And I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, drag it to the right. And you see when I hold down the Alt or Option key, it duplicates that graphic for me. So hold down Alt or Option key on your key keyboard and click and drag. There you go. And that makes your buttons set up for you. Now those are a little bit big, but you can change that. Click and drag and make them smaller. Okay, I'm going to leave them big. Alright, so those are set up, ready to go. Actually, these buttons should work. Um, this button and this button sh should go to the last page though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start from the right and work my way to the left and set up these buttons to work. Um, in the buttons and forms dialog box, which should pop out when you click on the button, if it doesn't, you can choose inter window interactive buttons and forms. In that, choose the minus button if you chose one of these preset buttons and then under actions choose the plus button and choose this is going to go to the very last page because it's the double arrow so go to last page and there's two buttons there so i'm just going to do that for both of them i'm going to go to actions minus delete the selection item yes hit okay go go to plus go to last page so both those buttons are kind of on top of each other but they should both go to the last page this button should go to the first page so you can go ahead and click action plus go to first page now I have two actions like you see here and probably the second action will override the first one but I'm just gonna click on the first one go to previous page and hit minus just in case because I don't like to take chances with this so click plus go to first page again and Click on the go to previous page, hit minus. So that's it for setting up buttons. This, that's the simple way to set up forward and back buttons on every page. Um, and if I go to my pages, I actually need to make graphics on every page so you can tell the difference on every page. So I'm going to do that real quick and save this. Is I just made a number on every page just to keep it simple. One, two, three, four on every page. And let's go ahead and save it and try out those forward and back buttons. Um, you have a preview here at the very bottom. You can hit the play icon. You can try it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like you see in mine, it doesn't work for me. This is really a glitchy preview. So I prefer to just go ahead and export it so you have two export options you can choose one of these but these are for print only so adobe pdf presets are for print only so i have to go file export and choose um, um adobe pdf print adobe pdf interactive or flash player either one of those excuse me adobe pdf interactive or adobe flash player right there um print will not work so i have to choose interactive Oh, sorry about that. No, I just hit OK. You can change your settings here. You can change your, your resolution at the bottom. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to hit OK now. This is saying that I set it up for print and it's not going for print. Um, and this will, if you hit yes, it will open in full screen. And just try out your buttons here, forward and back, and they work. So there you go. So if you just need a forward and back button, there you go. That's it. That's all you got to do to do the forward and back button. Now, I chose those automatic buttons that were already set up. I tweaked a few of them a little bit. Um, but again, you can try the, PD, the Swift file as well. So file, save as, choose Flash Player, type out the name you want. Um, you don't have to change anything here either. Um, this is the interactive page curl. If you want that, it's automatically checked. Um, and your resolution's on the Advanced tab. So I'm not changing anything. Hit OK. Hit OK again. I know it was set up for print, and I am making it an interactive document. So forward and back buttons seem to work. Okay, so that opened in a web page, by the way, and as an HTML file. So that's set. That's good. That's ready to go. So um, I can go back, and I can make my individual buttons that jump between pages now that, those, that, not, that I know those work. I'm going to go back to my A master. 
click down here choose a master I'll go to pages and choose a master and now I'm gonna set up my buttons up top now this is a graphic so this graphic I didn't try that one out but this graphic is um, not functional so what I'm gonna do is make it functional by going to the rectangle tool you can hit M to jump to the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna draw an invisible rectangle right on top of my buttons I'm gonna change the fill and the stroke to none for this rectangle so again this is an invisible rectangle right on top of my button and it doesn't matter what size it is doesn't even matter if it's a rectangle it can be a square circle whatever I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that and choose interactive convert to button now I'll do that one more time you see that little icon comes up that means it is now a button um, so it has been changed to a button I'm gonna go ahead and change ch create another one um, again change the color to none right go back to my selection tool right click on it choose interactive convert to button now that's a button and it goes ahead and names the button and brings up the buttons dialog box buttons panel excuse me um, I can hold down the alt or option key and drag that button to create the next two buttons so hold down alt or option drag your button and it goes ahead and creates the rest of the buttons for you so now I have 14 buttons somehow that's a lot of buttons okay so now those are set up to be to go somewhere um, I can go ahead and hit an action I can go to a page but see how these settings are for liquid HTML and Swift only so this won't work for a PDF um, these will work for PDF only but the top settings will work for both so I'm going to actually choose go to destination and set these up but I don't have a destination set you see my destination is grayed out and so I don't have my destination set um, so when I go to set these up I need a destination so I'm going to go back go back to pages I'm going to go ba back to page one on page one I'm going to choose my type tool I'm going to right click and make a text box this is going to be an invisible text box no lines or anything while my cursor's flashing right click within my text box go down to interactive and choose new hyperlink destination that's going to be my landing spot for my buttons and I'm going to go ahead and name this page one or page one anchor whatever helps you remember it you want to make sure it's a text anchor that's the default setting if it's a page anchor or a URL it's not gonna work those will work for other things but not for what we're doing here um, so that's set that you didn't see anything change but it's set trust me you'll see it in a second um, go to page two do the same thing right click a regular click excuse me make a text box with the type tool right click with that cursor flashing the cursor has to be flashing Go to interactive new hyperlink destination page two next page do the same thing um, by the way if you go up to your selection tool right click and choose interactive go to new hyperlink destination it's gonna mess up because my cursor wasn't flashing so I cannot choose text anchor I can only choose page or URL again those will not work for what we're doing here we're making this kind of a versatile this is a workaround really but this is a versatile document that will work for as a Swift or a PDF and and be able to jump between pages new hyperlink destination page 3 um, not adding any interactive um, tricks the um, interactive elements to the buttons in this video I might do that in the future page 4 and um, page anchor but you can make rollover buttons here again these text boxes are invisible you won't be able to see them when you open up the PDF or the Swift file you won't be able to see them in fact I've gone through and deleted these by accident because I thought they were mistakes so you might want to select those four text boxes you just created or however many you create and choose command L or control L on the PC and lock them just so you don't accidentally delete these and these text boxes these text boxes these landing spots and so click on them choose object lock or command L and lock them in place there you go so now everything should be set except for my buttons I'm gonna go back to a master one last time and we'll be done after we set this up so click on your four buttons one at a time I'm gonna select my first button if I can get it to click right there and on this button I'm gonna go back to window interactive um, Window interactive buttons, 
click on the button again I've already added de go to destination if you want me to redo that here it is click plus go to the very top option works for PDF and Swift choose your destination it automatically defaults to page one so that one's set ready to go page one is set go to the second one choose plus go to destination go to destination it sets to page one I want that to be page two and the next one on release or tap you can change that by the way if you want to do rollover buttons that's there it might work for you page three sometimes you have some odd things happen in PDFs but usually it works I, th I think that will work I'll set this one up to be a rollover why not but page four will be a rollover and um, go to destination I have to set that again that will go to page four okay so it's set to go um, you have some other functionality that's why I'm not messing with the appearance you can change your buttons but you have to build your buttons in InDesign for that to work okay go back to um, pages everything should be set up actually I don't have to do that everything should be ready to go so I'm gonna go file save save my InDesign file in case I ever need to change my buttons or my graphics again I can do that so save it that way go file export to export my PDF make sure it is a interactive PDF I'm gonna save it hit replace and again not change anything here um, you can change these if you want hit OK hit OK and it should be ready to go and the buttons at the top should now work as well as the buttons at the bottom that rollover button yeah it worked so you kinda gotta roll over it and it works okay so you can make a rollover document this way and that works so that works as a PDF by the way you can scroll through a PDF just so you know you can you can still scroll through it it's just a nice little thing to add to it um, and plus you can make the Swift you have an option make a Swift you're not doing any programming here not looking at any code again I'm not changing anything in the settings just setting it up just hitting OK and it's making Go ahead and opening in here. Rollover work button works here too. Um, it's opening in Safari for me just because that's the default. So that works. Okay, ready to go. So if you want to save this as an EPUB, it doesn't work. I was going to show that as well. If you save as an EPUB, this is what comes out. Um, I saved an earlier version of this. Um, but this will work quite well for a PDF, a Swift interactive PDF and this also works as a print PDF so you will lose your functionality and if you save this you can hit export and you can open it and you see I, I lose my buttons my buttons disappeared because of the settings I didn't change any of the settings you can actually view your buttons but as you see here I lose my functionality here I can scroll through it still um, but it's nice to have that functionality if you're looking at your document on the screen but it is nice that you have the option of printing this PDF and having a high quality high resolution document um, you could use this for a portfolio if you're in graphics so that's it that's how you make an interactive PDF in Adobe InDesign CS6 hope you're able to do this and if you have any questions or comments please post them at the bottom of this video